How about this, guys? Our next guest debuted in the UFC just over nine years ago. And in that time, we've had the honor and privilege of watching him grow up before our eyes or racking up wins against the best of the best. He now he announces his retirement, and it's a pleasure to have him on the show here today to look back on a spectacular career. Kevin Lee, thank you so much for joining us on Submission Radio, man. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. You guys have been a, a, a major part of my a, a part of my career, so I feel like this is only appropriate. Oh, dude, thanks. I think you're giving us way too much credit, but I, I can tell you, we definitely enjoyed chatting with you over the years, man. Always, always really good, insightful chats, man. Always appreciate how candid you were. And, um, dude, it's been days since you, you dropped your retirement video on socials. Dude, how are you feeling now, now, now that it's out there, man? Um, it, it took a little bit for me to, to kind of settle into it, right? Um, I think it's been a shock to a lot of people. Um, I've had some people, you know, kind of begging me, like, please don't. But uh, it, it's just it feels like the, the appropriate time. And, and, and at the end of the day, I'm I'm a man. Right. I, I got to stand on 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 my own. So uh, it, it feels appropriate. It feels at the appropriate time. I, I'm really excited to, to kind of venture into some new businesses and and kind of uh, get the rest of my life figured out when you when you fight. It's it's everything becomes about the fight. Everything becomes about that date. Uh, and it's been that way for me for for almost 12 years now. And in the months that I have off, uh, which isn't a lot, right? I'll take one month off and then two months to prepare for a fight. Uh, but in that one month off, it is always my most productive time to kind of wrap up my real life. And uh, and, and I'm kind of excited now to have more of that time to, to kind of do and, and kind of get the, the burden of, of fighting out the back of my mind. Mm. Uh, take us through that process, dude. Like, when did you kind of make that official decision? Hey, I'm posting this video. Was it something you had to like grapple with, discuss it with people about? Like, how did it all come together? Yeah, I, I had to discuss it with a few people. But if I'm really being honest, um, mm -hmm. it's been something that I've been thinking about since I fought Charles Oliveira, mm -hmm. um, and, and even the, even Faraz Zahabi will tell you. I, I've never, you know, sometimes when you when you get done with a fight and you walk into the back, sometimes you 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 have moments where you're like, what the fuck did I just do? Like, <laughs> we, like this is crazy, right? Mm. Uh, but after that fight, I, I had a different type of, of feeling to it. And, and, and part of me wants to post the the post fight interview that I that I did um, for that fight where I kind of told him that I would take a few years off. Yeah. Uh, and and I, honestly, I probably should have retired right then and there. But it was just, this is what I've been doing for so long. This is where where I put uh, all of my heart and soul into. And, and I just kind of doubled down. I, I made sure that, that this is what I was going to do. Um, I went through a couple of different surgeries. And, and even while healing from those surgeries, the, the thought of being a champion and the thought of, of, of fighting never lost my mind. That was my sole uh, focus. But it's, it's, it's been something I've been grappling with for, for a long time. Um, after this last fight, just kind of, solidified it for me I, I think and it took a few days for me to to kind of get out the feelings get out the emotions you know um and, and really make a sound decision i feel like for a lot of people not just fighters but it can be especially for fighters like fighting can be such a huge part of your identity right like yeah. even even like you can have whatever job in the world and it's like what are you oh i'm a this or i'm a that but with a fighter it's like so much more comes with it and you do it day in and day out, arguably more hours than most jobs. And then it's like, you know, you do it on the big stage and then that's your, your public profile. How hard was it for you, um, I guess, putting like like switching gears for, for something that you've done, you know, since you were so young, essentially, and being like, all right, that's not really going to be my identity, any, identity uh, anymore. Because I, I feel like some people, they almost need it, right? Like they need it to, to be part of their identity. What, what was that process like for you saying, all right, I'm not going to be fighting anymore? You, you know the 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 attention is is a, is a big one. You know, mm. and you hear a lot of uh, 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 either professional athletes or or kind of public figures kind of talk about it, especially in fighting, because you're the one that's doing it. It's not even just a team; it's you. Um, and you got guys like like Floyd Mayweather who make all this money, and they're still addicted to that attention. Um, and and it is a part of it is a small part of your identity when you meet somebody is like, Hey, I'm Kevin Lee. I, I'm an MMA fighter. Boom, boom, boom. And they kind of already, it, it, it piques a certain interest um, from, from a lot of people that you meet. So 
it's it's real still fresh, right? It, this just yeah. happened like last week, so it, it's hard for me to say if it's any different right now. Like I don't necessarily. I've never really tried to tie my my identity into fighting, mm. um, but I think over the last twelve years, and obviously creating the name that I have, I think that was inevitable. But I don't really know what it feels like to be apart from that yet. You know, it's it's the fight was still just last week, so uh, you, you'd have to ask me that in a few months, and and then I'll be able to tell you if if I'm able to uh, separate myself from Kevin Lee the fighter versus. Kevin Lee, the, the person. I, I've mm. always felt like Kevin Lee, the person, but to other people, I, I think they look at me a little different. So I don't know what that's going to look like yet. Mm. I know you mentioned in the video that there's some injuries and um, you got to go deal with some injuries. Can you sort of mention, like, break that down for us? Do you have some new injuries that popped up leading into this fight, or was it from this fight that you got these injuries? What are they, man? Um, it, it's the same injury. Uh, my, my knees have just been uh, giving me hell for, for three years now. Um, and it's, it's been, I, I didn't really, the, the hardest thing before this was, was weight cutting. Right. Um, and, and me going up to, to 170 kind of alleviated that, but I, I've never had to deal with this type of, of, of injuries before. And honestly, if, if, if I'm really kind of looking at myself and, and I kind of take a step back and I, and I look at how this camp went, um, I, I don't move the same. I, I'm not moving at the same speed that I was before. Uh, and really, I had to take it easy the whole camp um, and, and then try and turn it on during the fight. And, and honestly, I just wasn't ready for that for that speed. And my body is just not, you know, my knees just aren't aren't prepared. So I've, I've got a torn ACL. Um, I've had it since that Diego Sanchez fight. Um, I, I decided not to get the surgery after the Diego Sanchez fight and just strengthen it and try and fight on it. But it's, it, it's pretty obvious, it's pretty clear that that I need uh, to have surgery on it. I saw someone post a video of me jumping uh, into the into the cage, which is something that I've done for every fight, right? I've, I've had 19 fights in the UFC, mm. and for 18 of those fights, I, I always jumped and I slammed in, uh, in the cage. Uh, and somebody showed me a video of me doing that in this fight, and uh, and you can tell the, the, the immediate difference. And honestly, I really hurt myself. Uh, before the fight even started, I hurt myself multiple times through the camp, and um, it's something that needs to be fixed, whether I'm going to fight or not. What was it like going into that fight, knowing all those things? Right, I imagine that would have been just a huge burden in in the back yeah. of your mind. Um, it was, and it was something that that I was thinking about the entire time during the fight. You know, it was a short mm. fight, but but that was that was my thought the whole time: was protect my leg, protect my leg. Uh, and, and forgetting that he can hit you in the chin too, so um, yeah, that that when, when you're fighting at this level, you you can't have any other thoughts, you can't have any other nagging things like that. Um, and and I think it was a factor. I'm not gonna say it was the only factor. He he, he he's very good. Mm. Uh, he's strong. He he's athletic. He's all those things that I knew that he was gonna be. Um, but me dealing with the injury, I, I thought if I get it later into the fight, if I get into the groove of the fight. Then, then adrenaline and everything was going to take, take over. Uh, but obviously, I, ne I never got to that point. So, you know, that, that that's one of the the, the things that I overlook. Mm. But that's going to be frustrating, right? Like, you must have points during the camp leading into the fight where you're like, man, if only, <laughs> if only my knees were the way they were, like, earlier yeah. on in my career, or, like, as you're fighting. I can't yeah. imagine, like, grappling with that and then also having to rely on adrenaline having to kick in mm. to potentially win a fight rather than before, you know? Yeah, and even, even some of my coaches would say, you know, there, there were some times that I would come into the gym on and, like, in, in, in feeling like the old me and, like, really, really uh, uh, at, at, at the level that I should be at. And then there's some days where, where I barely would come in and, you know, could, could barely move around. Um, and it was that inconsistency that that made them not confident in it. Um, and I just kind of, OK, when the day comes, I'm going to be that. I'm going to turn it on. Uh, and obviously that didn't play out right. I've always felt like, you know, like if, if you're, for example, a tradie, like you and you, you know, you need tools, right? You can if you break your hammer, you can replace it or you, you whatever. But like with fighters, like your body is your tool. You, you can only repair something so many times and then it leads to other things, you know, arthritis and all this kind of stuff. So I, I, I applaud people like yourselves who kind of look at it and go, dude, I, 
is a part of you that's just like, dude, I don't want to break my body down anymore because you're still a young guy. But like this stuff catches up to you in like 20, 30 years. I always remember Bass Rutten saying how he has to like walk backwards to get his mail because like his knees yep. and stuff like that. I'm assuming that stuff factors into your mind, right? Yeah, I, I've spoken with so many fighters that, that after they retire and, and, and they're broken up and they're broken apart. Um, and they they always say like, OK, I took too many fights at the end where mm. I, I kind of knew in the back of my mind. But because we're so like, I don't know, we just determined mm. people like you, you're going to go through it anyway. And you and damn be the consequences. You'll deal with it later. But for me, I, I've got a son now. So that was one of them, the main factors of me kind of making this decision. Like I, I got to live like I got to live after this, you know, and, mm. and I could offer so much to the world. I could offer, you know, so much more than just than just fighting. Um, I, I think that I'm a lot more than an athlete, especially if I pour my time and energy into it. When I, I live in Miami now, right? The, one of the, the most, the richest cities in the world. And, and I look around and there's so many people making millions of dollars that, that don't put in the same, that don't have the same tenacity. They don't put in the same determination that I do towards this sport. So when I look at it, I, I, I think what's the best avenue for my son? Do, does he want to see me, you know, broken up with a, with a championship belt? Even if I get, even when I get that championship belt, is, is it is it worth the same if I, I had to sacrifice a big part of my health for it? Um, and I, I still don't have to have the answers to that. But for now, for my foreseeable future, it's it, it, it's not worth it. So um, I'm still always going to be a part of the sport, but to compete professionally. Um, I have to look back on my career. I have to be proud of it. I have to be, uh, I'm trying to look at it from a different lens instead of, oh, I could have did this. Oh, I could have did that. Oh, this could have been better. Oh, I still haven't achieved. I, I got to look back and, and, and be proud of, of the things that I have done and, uh, and and show myself a little bit more respect. Th this fight, this last fight for me was, was about respect. Um, when I left the UFC, I, I felt like my respect was taken away from me. And this one was all about that. And, I, and I'm kind of, even though the fight, nobody wants to get cho choked out on national TV. You know, nobody wants to get beat in front of millions of people. Um, I'm still proud that I went out there and I, and I went out on my shield and uh, I went against a tough guy. Mm -hmm. Well, man, you know, we all respect you and the stuff that you've done has been absolutely incredible. The battles that you've had both in and outside the octagon and also just the fact that you retired, like what Casper said, that's kind of the hardest thing to do when you're 30. A lot of people are just stuck around in that contract and just try to make as much money as they could or try to recreate stuff. And you've done something that's really, really brave and sets an example for the rest of the roster. I think there's a lot of young fighters that find themselves in, the, in a contract without really having the same passion or ability to be in it, but then yeah. having to stay in it because that's what they've always done since they were in their 20s. But you mentioned looking back on your career and how you want to be proud of it. And, dude, your career has been absolutely electrifying. I want to kind of look back on it a little bit, though, because when you retire, I suppose it puts things into perspective a little bit easier. What stands out to you if we talk about some of your most memorable moments or fights or things that stand out in your mind about your UFC career? What stands out to you as the top one or two? Um, top one or two? I, I, I think... It's mostly that I, I always was willing to take on the toughest fights, mm. the the fights that that you know not a lot of people saw me winning or not a lot of people even saw me taking and, and thinking that I wouldn't take the fight. Um, the Edson Barboza fight was, was was one of the highlights for me um, because he was so explosive and so dangerous and and I was so afraid of that fight. Um, I, I was just proud to to step up in there. Uh, let alone like win and, and and have the fashion of fight that we did. Um, there, there's there's so many there's so many fights. I, honestly, there, there's guys like even the the young prospect guys that I fought like Jake Matthews, mm -hmm. um, who was like one of the top prospects across the world. And you know, I was on my come up. He was on his come up, and it didn't make much sense for us to fight. But I, I was kind of glad of, of, of that one. There, there was. I could go through a list of, of fights, whether it be veterans like Efren Escadero, um, guys like Diego Sanchez, who, 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 you know, I really had to to dig deep and 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 win, which is which is crazy, right? Because mm. Diego's forty one and still making you and still pushing you to the limit. <laughs> um, 
there, there was just there was a lot of fights that that I, I'm gonna look back on it and be able to show my son, and, and I think he'll be proud of those. Mm. I feel like the the battles that you had in the octagon that we saw were just a very small part of like the battles that you've had sort of throughout your life, right? Like, and that's kind of part of what makes you you. Like, you've always been a fighter, and you've always overcome, and you've always kind of shown that determination. So I think to to only look at the battles that you had in the octagon that we saw is kind of missing a huge part of like your, your career. Um, anything you look back on and you're like, oh man, like, I, I guess everybody has that, but anything you look back on, you're like, man, I wish I would have done this differently or that differently. Or, or if, if this really is retirement for good, any, any regrets about any of it at all? No regrets. Um, I, I wish the Aya Quinta fights had, had gone a little different. I wish I could have fought him maybe like five or seven times. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish the UFC kind of let you do, you know, just keep fighting the same guys over and over. Um, but regrets, no. I mean, even if this this is like it for good, like you said, it, the the history is already written. You know, at, at one point I was one of the the, the most popular fighters in the UFC. Um, so the, those years are already they're already done, mm-hmm. regardless. Um, so I, I can always look back and, and, and kind of be be proud of those, those facts. There, I don't have any regrets on anything. I, I wouldn't do anything different, to be honest with you. I, w- I would do it all over and all the same. I, I just wish that I was, you know, smarter. But mm-hmm. especially in fights like the like the Tony Ferguson fight, um, I feel like that fight cost me a lot. Um, it cost me my head coach, which really changed the trajectory of my career. Um, it obviously cost me the world title, you know, it cost me a, a, a fight with Conor McGregor, which would have really changed uh, a lot of things financially, obviously. Um, so if there's any fights that, that I wish had gone different, it's the Tony Ferguson fight, but, uh, I don't have any regrets. No, I learned a lot even from that one. Mm-hmm. You know, me and Casper, we feel special about your career, man, because we've been able to follow it from the beginning. But I know we've got a few people watching the show that maybe started watching the UFC in the last few years. So I just want to break it down for those people. Crazy to think you joined the UFC at 21 and you've been fighting since before that, right, outside the UFC. And that's a lot of pressure to have on your back for such a long time. Now that you're on the other side of it, take us into it, man. Like, what was that really like being so young and having kind of the weight of the world on your shoulders while also, like you said, kind of being like this big star and being like famous and not kind of having a normal life of a 21 year old. Um, you know, it didn't really hit me until about 24, um, 21. When I, when I first got signed, I I was still kind of, I was the underdog, right? I I didn't, I didn't feel like, I, I felt like the, the sport was, was ahead of me and I was still trying to catch up to everybody. So, I, I didn't necessarily feel the pressure then until about 24. Um, and, and that was the, the the time I was starting to get, you know, uh, the Michael Chiesa uh, conference, which was kind of like mm. my big coming out party. Mm. And, and people calling me after that that conference and being like, oh, yeah, you really did it now. Like now you you in a you in a different bracket. Um, and that is when I kind of started feeling like the pressure because so many people you know, kind of had these expectations for me, um, that I didn't even necessarily set on myself. Uh, but I took on, I took that on, um, and I, and I didn't have a whole lot of guidance, right. And I didn't have a whole lot of, uh, uh, you know, outside of my head coach, I I didn't have much guidance through it. So it was more just, I'm gonna just bump my head until I make it right. And, uh, there, there was a lot of, it was a big learning curve. When you're talking about PR, you're talking about media, you're talking about, you know, marketing yourself and, and, and kind of being this this more than just an athlete. Like it takes a lot more in, in today's MMA, especially to to kind of stand out. Um, so it, it was a big learning curve and, and it's very difficult for you to 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 kind of understand it while you're in it. Um, so, yeah, it. it Sorry, I kind of got a, got got lost in the in the train of thought there. No, that's all right. Um, but yeah, so can can you repeat the question to me again? I'm sorry. Well, no, you, man, you you broke it down perfectly. I was just wondering what it was like. Like he said, 24 is when it kicked in for you, right? But like 
I was just going to follow it up with like most 21 year olds or even 24 year olds are at uni or college in America. They're partying it up. They're not worrying about diets, training, world titles, yeah. marketing, like you said, sponsorship deals, making yeah. the right opportunities. Do you kind of wish you had more of an opportunity to kind of enjoy those years like a normal person would? Um, yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, no, no, I don't. I don't. I, I, I have my taste of it um, a little bit here and there. And, and that life like never really appealed to me too much. You know, I, I'm kind of a person where if I do something once, I've done it already and I don't want to do it again. Um, so there, there are certain parts of, of normal living, I guess, that, that no, nah, it, it didn't really appeal to me. Kind of having that goal and having and, and knowing that no matter what, if I worked out that day, no matter what, if I if I bettered my technique that day, then then I was one step closer to the goal that kept me more satisfied than than uh, any other form of life. And I think now that's going to be the hard part to replace, you know, because I'm not chasing that UFC title no more. So uh, it's not about like, OK, today I'm getting my arm bar better. Today I'm getting this better. Today I'm defending something better. Um, it, it's going to be more about, you know, today I'm making a lot of, a lot more money. I, I need to, to get my business together. I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, and, and I think that's going to be uh a harder adjustment to make, but in the end, it's going to be more satisfying. And no, uh, to, to answer your question, I don't really, I don't really wish that I would have went down another path earlier. I, I think MMA has done a lot for me. I, I think I'm going to stick around the sport, even if I'm not competing professionally. I'm going to be training people. I'm going to be coaching. I'm, I'm, a, I'm going to be training myself um, because I, I feel. MMA really kind of saved me and, and, and saved my life and, and kind of it's built a strong character in me. And it's built like these things that I had that I recognize that a lot of other people don't have. And, and I think it was from my experience of, of learning how to fight and, and fighting the best fighters in the world. I think it's given me a whole lot that I can give back to, to other people. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't change that just so that I could, you know, drink on the weekends and party it up. <laughs> Uh, what is it like thirsty Tuesdays are it's crazy you guys are crazy over there in college keg stands we don't have that kind of fun stuff over here so I can't <laughs> compare if I, I don't do, know about Australia I, I've been out with Tai Tu Avasa <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right Tai Tu Avasa University is a, is a degree that everybody should obtain that's hey, a wild what about, boy that's a oh, wild boy yeah I was gonna say even though like you have no regrets there do you ever think about what it would have been like if you didn't sign up to the UFC from such a young age? I only say that because we see a lot of fighters that come in at a young age. They don't have a career like you do. Like most of them are unable to sustain it. And by the time they get kind of uh, out of the UFC system, they find themselves really young, but kind of uh, a little bit broken in the sense that they've already sort of had their dream and kind of lost it. You were in there from a young age, like you said. But you had to fight the best of the best from the very beginning. And a part of me can't help but feel that, you know, you must have thought at some points, hey, if I was outside of the UFC system for a few more years, I could come in and kind of make this thing explode a little bit quicker rather than doing it over such a long period of time. I wonder, do you have any regrets about that or thoughts about that? Um, I, I see what you're saying. Um, I, I don't have any regrets about it, but, you know, I, I, I do think that managing a fighter um could be taken a little bit more seriously um especially in, in today because of the level of athlete that you're getting um so I, I do think my career could have been managed better uh whether it be early on when with me first getting into the ufc or me getting that that first big push uh yeah i, I think i could have been i could have managed it a, a little bit better i think in mma we we do too much of letting the fighter kind of pick and choose and, and manage himself, uh, which, you know, I'm, I'm a bit crazy, so I'm going to take on the biggest challenges without really giving a damn. Um, but I, I think I could have had a more or a even more successful career had I taken the, the longer, slower route, um, like you're talking about, and kind of having a bit more patience with it and, and um, not necessarily just going head for head with, with the top guys 
all the time. You know, it's that that's kind of a lot to ask of, of anybody. Um, so I, I do think I could have been managed more correctly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I got you, man. I got you. Um, it's such a good, smooth flowing uh, a chat that it's kind of hard to squeeze it in. But you did man- mention manage. So if you're someone uh, or anyone who's trying to manage their beard, their facial hair, trying to look as sexy as possible, our good friends at Manscaped have you covered with the Beard Hedger Pro, the best grooming tool for your face currently with a rotary wheel with 20 precision settings. Uh, I always like that because I like to keep the sides a little bit shorter than the bottom, and now you can do that. It's waterproof, so you can smash that out in the shower. No more shaving in the shower. Uh, and then washing afterwards and getting rid of all the excess hairs. You can do it all in once at the same time. They've got the 41 mil titanium coated T-blade for a comfortable trim and blade durability. The beautiful rotary wheel with 20 precision settings. There's an advanced lift comb that lifts flat lying hairs for smooth single stroke trimming. Like I mentioned, waterproof, good battery of up to 60 minutes runtime. And best of all, you can get it in a pack. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit where you get the Beard Hedger itself, Beard Shampoo, Beard Conditioner, Beard oil, beard balm, and the free gifts, the beard brush, beard combo, and beard scissors. You already know Manscaped looking after you and 20% off with the code submission and free shipping. That's 20% off with the code submission and free shipping, baby. Good stuff from Manscaped, as always. Isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. And speaking of good stuff, what about Fanzo? I know our uh, listeners have been using it to find the perfect venue to watch their fights at. But did you guys know that they recently launched an Asahi check-in challenge in the lead-up to the highly anticipated Rugby World Cup in France to create the ultimate experience for sports and rugby fans? And the best news is you guys can join in the fun right now by simply checking in at participating venues. You guys will unlock some awesome prizes to be claimed when you visit. Simply download the Fanzo app by clicking the link in the description below and head to the Asahi World Cup 2023 homepage. You guys can just check in at your local participating venue and go into the draw to win one of two trips to the Rugby World Cup France 2023 final. How about that? What a trip that would be. But that's not all. You also instantly win a free 300 mil Asahi Super Dry while stocks last. So make sure to click that link in the description below. Download the app and start checking in to win the trip of a lifetime, Cass. Yeah, if it's looked like I've been on my phone this whole time, it's because I have been just using the fans app. You can see it on the screen. And uh, dude, who doesn't want a free Asahi? I had some Asahi Ooh. on the weekend. Asahi's great. A free 330 mil bad boy for you. Every time you check in, what's not to love? And also I found a venue which had 110 screens and it just blew, oh. blew my fucking mind. Anyway, with that said, uh, Kevin, I wanted to go back to you. You were talking about like management uh, and how, you know, it could have been managed better and stuff like that. And it, it's like, you're a guy who's sort of been through it all you've done it from such a young age and I, I wonder like is there any advice that you have like for, for some of the younger fighters maybe starting uh, their journey something that you've already done any advice for them uh yeah you gotta find that guy you gotta find a guy you gotta find a coach you gotta find whether it's a coach a manager or whoever it is uh you gotta have that guy um and and I think fighters kind of know what I'm what I'm what I'm saying um it's like you you got to have that right hand man like somebody's got to be there to to look after you when you when you don't want to look after yourself uh and and i think in in especially in mma it's it's kind of rare you know in, in boxing you see it a lot more uh where guys even use their their fathers right and, and mm. their fathers kind of manage them correctly they make sure they train correctly they make sure they sleep correctly they make sure they do everything correctly and you see guys have these long, uh, very successful careers, and honestly, avoid a lot of damage. Um, whether it be a, a, a trainer, a fighter, a coach, uh, your your father, your your brother, wh- whoever it is, uh, you you got to have that guy that that's kind of always gonna be there with you and and, and by your side, uh, regardless of the of the titles, regardless of the money, regardless of what whatever. Um, you, you, you need to have that guy. It's a very, very difficult sport to go through without having somebody there by your side to, to look after you when you can't look after yourself. So somebody's got to be there to stop the fight when, and, and it's too much of guys getting their head beat in with nobody with a towel. Mm-hmm. You, do you think that's a problem these days? Like when you watch some of the fights, like guys aren't really finding these kinds of guys is that like, is that, do you think? Um, we, we've seen it. We've seen yeah. it from time. You know, I, I think you can point out a couple fighters uh, or a couple fights where you're like, how how is it somebody 
caring <laughs> about this dude and you're just gonna yeah. let him just come on this is this is real life you know he, he's got to fight again and then we have seen those same fighters and you never see him again um and, and i think that that's a that's a real shame um yeah we, yeah I, I think i think uh mma needs to get a little bit better with that and, and caring for the athlete even if he isn't gonna care for himself mm, i i got you man um help us understand this retirement by the way because it sounds like it's not 100% definitive, you leave in the door open. How do you view this retirement? And and I guess, what, what would it take to sort of bring you back? I, I know it's all very, very, very fresh, but um, yeah. I get the sense that like, it's not necessarily 100%. It's, it's 100%. I, I, okay. I had to put it, I had to put it outside of my mind. Um, I don't want to leave a 95 and, mm. and you know, Maybe in 10 years, I'll come back or maybe in three years or maybe in two years. Um, for right now, it's, it's going to be about getting the surgery, uh, healing myself and then making a lot of money outside the sport. Um, because I, I think that's ultimately uh, Dana White kind of said it best. He, he, he said, you know, and, and, I, and I, I'm taking him for his word now is MMA is more of an opportunity than it is a career. Um, and when, it, when the, the president, when the, when the biggest promoter in, in really in history, uh, especially MMA history, um, tells you that, I, I think you should kind of, you know, listen to it and, and use it to, and use that as, as a, a motivator to, to do other things in life. Um, I, I feel there's a lot that I can accomplish outside of the, the sport, uh, that me, constantly thinking about fighting is kind of blocking my vision a little bit. Uh, so I, I think you'll see me and you'll see me in a, in a totally different light. You'll see me in totally different ways. And, uh, and I think it'll shock a lot of people and, you know, who knows, maybe if <laughs> <laughs> the 5% here it comes. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. There's so many good fights. Um, I'm still, I'm always going to be a fan of the sport. You know, I, I started this sport as, as being like a, a, a commentator on, on Submission Underground, you know, back in the day when, when that was a thing, um, being in the forums. And, and I'm probably still going to be that guy. And I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I'm still going to be a fan of the sport. I'm still going to, every time I sit on at Saturday night watching these guys, I'm going to think like, damn, I would have did this. I would have did that. And, uh, and I'm still going to train, so we, we, I don't know. Well, I do know, but I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys are trying to make me say something that I don't want to say. Well, well we're just going to oh, say. No, I'm not, I'm not pushing you to say anything. I was just, I was, you know, the whole interview, you were like, ah, oh, for now, for now. I, I had to clarify, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, dude, it's, you know, the other thing is, you know, you're 30. Who knows what you're going to feel like? Right now, you feel like you're retired. Who knows what's down the line, right? And that's what you're saying. You're going to focus on some businesses. You're going to do your thing. And then we'll see. And it's your choice whether you choose to come back or not. But I got to ask, man, like he said, Dana, well, what's your relationship? Like, how do you look back on your relationship with Dana? Because I suppose in a lot of ways, like he said it, man, like you were young when you came into the sport. He's been a big part of your life for a long time. And um, did you speak to him before announcing your retirement? Because I wonder what his reaction would have been to it when he found out. I I didn't. Um, Me and Dana have a very hot and cold type of relationship. Um, we, we have a very, um, I, I, it's, it's a lot of push and pull there, you know? Mm. Um, I, I didn't speak to him before, but, but we'll have, we'll have a conversation pretty soon. I'm sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to comment too much on, on that. Cause yeah, that, that could get me in some, tr- into some trouble. They, 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 they kind of, they get pissed at me for, for, saying certain things and you know with me like i'm gonna try to give you the clearest honest answer that i can mm. um when, especially if somebody asks me a question or, or if i'm doing media or whatever and, mm. and and honestly they don't they don't like that too much i i think uh i, I think they don't necessarily want you to say certain things um I, i've been kind of told on hush hush about certain things and <sighs> yeah <laughs> yeah I get it. I'm very much the same. I like to just say it, shoot straight and say what's on my mind. So I understand being in a situation where you can't do that. It can be a bit frustrating because then you feel like you're not really being yourself. Um, yeah. 
I, I try to speak for myself. They, they try to speak for themselves. They're the promoter. We're the fighter. They've got certain, you know, things that they want to do. They got certain uh, goals that they want to accomplish. And they got certain ways of going about it that don't always necessarily benefit the fighter. And I, I just kind of always speak up for myself and saying, OK, I don't like this that y'all doing. And I, I don't even say most of it, really. I, I might say one out of ten. I, I, I let you slap me for like nine times before I actually say something. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, I, I don't think they necessarily I, I don't think they necessarily like any of that. Mm. And it could be just saying that right there is probably, you know, I'll probably get a phone call. <laughs> Well, at least you can chat to Dana and then, and then have that conversation. So speeding up the process. Yeah. Um, what what are you going to do, by the way, man? Like, what what, what are these sort of what, what what's your big focus on now? I think that was, that was one of the big takeaways as well. You putting things into perspective where there, there's more to life than just fighting. Um, yeah. what, what 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 do you want to focus on? Yeah, I would I would love to open up a gym. Um, I, I think that's going to kind of be the first thing that I do uh is is and even in that it, it takes so much you know to, even just to learn how the how the real estate works and, and and to buy a building and i don't know shit about any of this you know i've been doing this since i was 21 so um there, there's a whole lot of things that that um i have put on the back burner to to focus on on fighting um so yeah no, number one would be open up a gym uh number two I, i've kind of always wanted to be a chef and and that would I would kind of love to get into that at some point too. Dude, that's so. epic. Have you watched the show The Bear yet? What's that? Have you watched The Bear? The FX the Bear? show The Bear yet? It's, a, it's no, about it's a just... chef. Yeah, it's one Emmy for show of the year. Unbelievable oh. show. Oh, well, all right. Well, then, yeah, appreciate you putting me on. I'm on <laughs> yeah, you put me on to something. So, yeah. Well, why a chef, man? Because chef, a chef is a... Speaking of brutal career to brutal career, yeah. that's got to be up there as one of the hardest things Fucking to do. Hard job, man. Long hours. Yeah, bas basically, a chef, I guess, is, and it just shows your character. A chef is someone who wants to give somebody the perfect time, right? Like the perfect night out, the perfect meal, the perfect experience. And they kind of sacrifice a big part of their life to do it. Much like with fighting, right? Like you're going out there, you're getting in a battle with someone, but you're also entertaining all of these fans and you're putting your body on the line. It's kind of almost in the same vein. So I wonder, like, why chef? <laughs> um, I, I guess for exactly the reason that you that you just said, you know, I don't know. I, I kind of like entertaining people. I kind of like uh, putting smiles on people's faces and, and kind of seeing I, I feel like that makes me feel better. And that kind of um, it, it makes me feel like I'm, I'm fulfilling a, a purpose in, in, in the world. And I don't know, cooking, I've just always I've always enjoyed. I've always loved it. Um, my, my brother is this big cooking star now all of a sudden. Oh, so uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. A, a, a great business move as far as like, you know, generating attention and, and, and marketing and revenue right there. Um, and, and it's just it's just always kind of been a passion of mine outside of fighting. You know, it's, I, I love to cook. You know, you, you get a lot of fighters that like love video games and, and, and stuff like that. And they do great with Twitch and, and all that. But yeah. Um, I was I was kind of loved it. I don't know. It's it's something about it that I, I think everybody has to eat, right? Um, it's a universal thing, and I like the competition aspect of okay, I can cook a steak better better than you. Mm. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of things about it that I kind of you know that that kind of interests me. Um, it's not it's not my immediate goal, right? It's not um, what I'm immediately after. I think first I'll give back to the sport. Um, first I'll I'll kind of I'm. I'm 30 now, right? I'm I'm a man now, so I want to kind of give back to the kids a little bit and uh, and kind of teach them and, and kind of guide some some of these young ones uh, along the way, and then uh, and then we'll see after that. Where's where's the gym gonna be, by the way? Lo Las Vegas or Miami? Miami, Miami for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be here in Miami. This, this it's paradise. I, I don't know uh, how anyone isn't here to be honest with you. <laughs> well, I, I was gonna say me and Casper have never <laughs> been to Miami, so. We're going to have to visit this gym and just create an excuse to go over there. Have and hopefully workout, the restaurant's running as well. Yeah. So we could have some some food too. Hey, dude, as we wrap up, and by the way, like we appreciate your honesty 
And um, I really, I really enjoyed an opportunity to just kind of talk about your career, man, because people don't talk about the fact that you've had an epic career that has had so many great moments. And we just want to sort of mention that one more time, like for people that haven't had a chance to or have only started watching the sport recently, go back and watch Kevin's fights, man, because he's always had so many epic fights and we've had a chance to watch them. And yeah, man, like unbelievable stuff. What's your message to the fans that are watching this right now? The ones that have been on the road with you on the journey since the beginning of your run, since you were 21 years old, the ones that were watching the fights long before you were fighting for interim titles and doing things at press conferences. What What yeah. is your message to them as they're watching right now, as we wrap up? Um, that I appreciate every single one of them, like from, from the bottom of my heart. I know I don't, uh, I'm not always the most accessible uh, person. You know, I don't always kind of give back to, to my fans. And, and that's when we talk about, you know, uh, things that I might regret, that might be one of them, you know, is that I gave back a little bit more to the people that supported me because, you know, even in the early days, the, those were the ones that kind of keep you going. Um, at a certain point, it does get to be a lot. And, and I think that's why um, I kind of created this this distance between me and them. But anybody who's ever walked up on me, anybody who's ever, you know, came to me and asked for a picture and it's it's uh, it's it's thousands. It, it makes you feel like, I don't know, it just, it just makes it worth it a little bit. So I appreciate every single one of them. I wish I had gave back more to them. But, you know, maybe in the future I, I, I will still. Um, so, yeah, whatever they want to do in life, you don't have to be bogged down. You don't have to be stuck in, in one thing. Uh, set a goal. Continue to work at it and uh, enjoy your life. Enjoy your family. Enjoy. Uh, enjoy. Enjoy this thing. Love it, man. You're, you're always looking to give back, man. That's that's one thing that we always appreciate you. I, I feel like a very underrated interview, man. You always shoot straight. You always say what's on your mind. Always, always insightful chats. Um, appreciate all the memories. Thank you so much for entertaining us. Follow them at, at Motown Phenom. We've got to keep tabs on, obviously, the gym and the restaurant. And uh, look forward to sharing a meal one day, man, and maybe even having a session at, uh, at the new gym. Uh, wish wish sure. you nothing but the best, Kevin, in, uh, in, in anything you pursue from here on. Appreciate it, boys. Appreciate it. My boys down under. Appreciate that.